was going to be is please say yes or say no if you don't know what this was going to be. Any, any problem with that? But it's a little board, very cheap, where you can uh, install a Linux software which can be uh, which can be used to do many cool projects. Okay, so uh, the nice point with uh, this initiative like uh, Open HB, it, Open Hub, it's that it can be installed in a Raspberry Pi. Or Raspberry Pi. Uh, I don't know if you have a lot of interest on how to install this uh, uh, Open Hub in a Raspberry Pi because this is not what I'm going to do because the process of installing is easy and uh, it's well documented. Uh, what I would try to do is just to give you uh, some examples of the potential of this platform so you can try to use it. Okay? With that? Okay, it's fine. Uh, but let me say a couple of words of warning. Uh, I have to say, I, I think that this is a very interesting platform for teaching for teaching and for students, okay? Because it has a huge potential. You will learn to configure uh, databases, graphs, file systems, integrate different protocols. So it's very didactic, very good for teaching. On the other hand, this is difficult. I mean, you have been uh, working or wandering around some months now with the eDocus platform and with C-Wave. I'm right, have you been with C-Wave at Edomus? And C-Wave at Edomus, it's, it's uh, something, uh, it's something at, at the beginning, it's plug and play. So you plug and you can manage, and you have your difficulties. Uh, uh, Open Hub is not at all plug and play. You have to program, you have to, to code, and it's, Sometimes it's very difficult, but the results uh, can be amazing, okay? So, by now, I will switch to share my, my screen. I have some, I have some slides. Uh, maybe, did you receive the slides? Maybe you can open the slides in another computer if you want to. So, Daniel, please let me know if you see my screen by now. Yes. Yes, yes. It seems to work good. Daniel, Daniel, can you say something? Because I, can't, I cannot see you now. <laughs> yes, I, I do see your open hub into training slides. Yes. Did you? Did you uh, well, I, I guess I sent you all these uh, this, uh, this slides. So, what is uh, open hub? OpenHAB is a well, it's a platform, open source, uh, which try to put all together everything you can do regarding home automation. Okay, it try to be a, a single point of unification and integration. It tries to uniform users' interfaces and well try to provide a common approach to system rules. So the web page is this one, is openhab.org. So you can go to this page, and I have to say, they make a huge effort in documentation, downloading, and community and support to make things uh, easier. Here, from here, you can learn everything you need to, to install and configure the, the system. Okay, well, I would like to start with uh, these uh, pictures where I am going to show you that you can get incredible results, but it's difficult to configure, as I said before. Maybe if you have been working with EDOMUS and C Wave, maybe you can manage to turn on and off the lights, the rubber shutters, the logs. Maybe even you can control it uh, with your voice using Google Assistant or using Alexa or whatever. But 
the Edomos interface, interface is not so pretty. With OpenH uh, AB, you can get this kind of nice interface and you can make it uh, as personal as you want to. For instance, I love this one. This is uh, from, a, from a European user, including temperature, humidity, weather, uh, astro, about uh, sunset, sunlight, moon phase, everything. It has here integrated the multimedia, it has Spotify, and here it has the TV with Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime and YouTube and everything. And I love this one, for instance, it has here the shadow of the house regarding the, the sun position every time of the day, some nice graphicals. Even it has some, uh, you know, the electric car, something which is coming. Uh, so you have a BMW uh, i3 car, uh, here you can have the integration of the car, the charging, the, the well, everything about the car. So, this is some nice results you can get. For instance, you can, you can have in the interface how the system is doing, memory, hard disk, and everything. And even, this is very nice to be used in a, in a tablet, so you can uh, develop all this uh, nice uh, graphic interface, and the system is responsive. So uh, what you get when you see in a tablet is uh, really amazing and many people is using uh, in this way. Okay, so this is the, the good news. The results you can get are something that can be really, really amazing. The bad point is that this is difficult. I, I really uh, achieved to have in my home something like this but it took me like a month to, to make this up on my house and to make this everything works and looks so beautiful like this here. I learned a lot, that's why I'm telling you that this, this is very interesting for you and for your students because you will learn a lot, your, your student will learn also a lot. The software is for free and all you need is a Raspberry Pi, so this is very cheap, but you have to invest uh, a lot of time. Okay, well, uh, one of the things about uh, OpenHAV uh, or OpenHub, it's uh, based on the Eclipse work environment. It's a very well known programming development environment and is Fulbright in Java. In Java. The point with Java is uh, well, some people said that this is uh, not so good. Um, some people prefer another platform I told you before called Home Assistant, which is written in Python. So if you prefer Python, you maybe go to this other platform called Home Assistant. This one. This is something similar to Open uh, Hub, but this came from the United States and this platform is made in Python programming, not in Java. Okay? So, well, here you have the, 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 the web page where you can get all the software and all the support you need. And what uh, you have to do to install and do the first setup or open hub. Well, you have to go to the download page and download the distribution you need. So the, the, the nice point about uh, this platform is you can install it without any problem in Windows, in Mac OS, or in uh, Linux, or even in Raspberry Pi, or on, on Pine A64, even in Doc with Docker. Some people love to install it in Docker using a Synology NAS or a QNAP NAS. With Docker, you can install it in a NAS. Okay? My opinion it is uh, when I make try ends, sometimes in a, for, for having a quick uh, install and view and test, you can try with Windows, but the, the very nice point is to try to install in a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it's very easy, it's just you have to download the image. You have to put that uh, image in a SD card and just to uh, turn on, turn on the, the system. Okay? 
so uh, well if you go to the to the web page of uh, open hub and you go to the installation you have here everything about how to install the, the platform in, in the system you choose no? on my opinion i repeat windows is good to have a quick overview and raspberry pi is the good one and here is very well documented and you will find out uh, everything you know you need to to follow the install okay if i click here and you have everything you need here to know how to install this in a raspberry pi okay so uh, You see my face again. So I would like to check if you are following me uh, fine. I'm sorry, my, my English is not very good looking, but I hope you understand. And if I am going too fast or too slow, please let me know. And let me know if when I'm switching the screen is fine. Please tell me, Daniel, is fine? Yes, everything is okay. Okay, so it's nice to see your, your face again. <laughs> I will. I will go on. So, uh, at this point, um, well, I will. I will show you my install here. Check if I can show you. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is my. Uh, 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 this is my Raspberry Pi with the dongle C wave. I will. I will show you. Okay, and I would like to know if. If you want me to explain you further the install process, or, or I can go on. Uh, but there is nothing very special in the installing process, and the installing process depends a lot on the platform you will use. So please let me know if you want to know something special about the installing process, or if I just go on. What do you think? Any opinion? Any opinion? Okay, go on, go on. Okay. I will go on. Uh, so I, I have to, I have to say, if you are used, see, some, something to say from Germany. Okay, I will, I will say again my, my screen. Uh, I didn't find out nothing. Nothing very difficult in the installation process. I will try just to explain you what I found uh, special <coughs> in during the installation process and the kind of things you have to understand or the things I find out where. So I will serve the again my screen and I will go on. So, okay, so the point would be something like this. When you uh, finish your installation, you will have to go to your browser and you have to write down the IP uh, of the system, the IP address of the system, you install the system, and the port uh, 8080 and you will get this screen so via this screen you will have to choose if you if you want the sign the simple the standard the expert or the demo install okay on my opinion the the standard would be fine okay if you choose the standard installation uh, when you so here you click the standard installation and finally you will go via your web browser to the system you will go to the ip uh, of your system and the port 8080 and you will get this uh, this this kind of screen okay so you will have welcome to uh, open hib open hub and you will have this opportunity to go to the rest api Home Builder, basic user interface, and H uh, AB panel. Okay, 
if you choose the expert mode, if you choose the third, sorry, if you choose the, 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 the third option, you will get something similar to, to this one. With more options, you will have the REST API, the Home Builder, the Open Log Viewer, Grafana, well, I will explain uh, every screen from here, I'm not explaining it here. So, uh, let, me, let me say something, uh, I will let you to understand. Uh, Open Hub, it's a platform with uh, a lot of possibilities, and the point of having a lot of possibilities is sometimes good or is sometimes bad. Uh, so, when you open uh, the, the interface, and you go to expert mode, for instance, like this one, you will find out that you, you will have so many screens and in some of them you can do similar things. So, for me, what's a little bit difficult to understand where do I have to go to do things? Where do I have to go to do things, okay? But, well, by now you have to learn that the better is to go to the paper user interface is the main one you will use to make your configurations. Paper user interface, much better than using the basic user interface or the classic user interface. Then use this one, paper user interface. And for a, a graphical interface with, with, with people, I will use this one, HAD panel, okay? I will explain later. So here I have the explanation a little bit about, about all these options. If you go to the paper U user interface, if you go to paper user interface, it's the main we use for system administration. If you go to HVA panel, it's the smart user interface for smartphone and tablets. This one is good. Uh, I will explain you later this one uh, about Hub Builder. Um, the, the basic user interface. Well, there is many options. To have many options is uh, not uh, the best, but mainly I would recommend you to configure uh, almost everything for the paper uh, user interface and use HAD panel to configure uh, the, the user interface. Okay, but there are many others. Okay. And I will explain now some concepts about uh, OpenHEI, OpenHub. The first concept I would like to explain is binding. Binding, a binding is a, a, a piece of software that lets you to integrate uh, protocols and systems in the, in, in the OpenHub. And if there is a binding, it's very, very easy to integrate. And this is the main strength of uh, Open Hub. So if you go uh, here to the to the main page and you look for the bindings, there is a lot of bindings for anything you need. And for uh, uh, for instance, you can go to Google and say Open HB, Open and say KNX binding. And you will find out the explanation of how to pint, how to link uh, open hub to uh, KNX. Here you have all explanation. So, for instance, if you like, for instance, uh, uh, in open HBA with uh, Philips, Philips UE, Philips U lighting. Sorry for that. But here you will have all the all, all you need to do to, to, to integrate the fields. So this is done always via the biddings. So here you have all the list of biddings available and there is a lot. One of the things I like of Open Hub is that usually when there is something amazing and something new, you will find out that uh, the, the community will develop very, very quickly the bidding to integrate that. So, main home automation systems in the market, you will find here. Even there is a bidding with Minecraft, which is very funny. And you integrate, you play in Minecraft and you turn on and off the, the right 
using Minecraft. There is at MQTT, there is Netatmo, there is almost billions about everything. So the first concept you have to uh, understand is the concept of bidding. Bidding for everything. You have bidding for Sidway, bidding for TV, bidding for an OSA, bidding for Kinex, bidding for a Samsung TV, bidding for a um, weather uh, PlayStation, whatever. Okay? And the other thing you have to. May I ask one question? Yeah. Uh, if I try to use the uh, kind of bidding, uh, what kind of physical link do I use? I will explain it later, but the, the response to your answer is here in slide number 39. You will use this device, which is IP to KNX, and it will speak via TCP IP with your, with your Raspberry, okay? Okay, thank you. You will need this physical device. Of course, bidding is software, bidding is good, but sometimes you need some hardware to complete the, to, to use with the bidding. This is explained in the, in the bidding page, okay? Well, another thing I would like to, to explain, uh, it, it's the difference between, or this is something I, it, it was hard to me to understand, is the difference between things channels and eat items, okay? Uh, a thing is a physical device, something, hardware doing some, something. But maybe you can have, for instance, you can have one module managing two lights, okay? But these two lights are something called uh, channels. So you can have one device with two channels, channel one for light number one, channel 2 for light number 2, okay? This is here where you can understand the difference between things. Thing, a thing is a physical device, huh? and an item it's uh, uh, the device capability. You can have one module, as the ones you have with C-Wave, you can have one module, and you have, can have two items, light number 1 and light number 2. So you will find out uh, that in the, in the open hub, the, the system is uh, recognizing uh, things in, a, in, an in, in, a, in an inbox. So it's really for finding out new things in your home. It will automatically detect your Samsung TV. It could detect your Netat mode, your Philips U lighting. It can detect also some kind of devices, I will explain later. But these things, um, ha can have different features, and the features, the, the capability of the device, it's called item, okay? So, this was also difficult for me to understand. I repeat, first thing was difficult to me to understand, it's to find out where to do things, where to go, because I find out that I can go and do similar things in in different classic user interface, basic user interface, or paper user interface, you can use whatever you want, but I recommend use, to, to use the paper in, in, in user interface. This is the, the first thing I have to learn. I have to go to the documentation and try, try to understand the difference between any, any of these uh, options. And the second thing, the difference between things and items. And uh, also understand the concept of bidding, eh? a piece of software to link the platform with different systems via different protocols or ways of communication. Well, uh, a little, a couple of uh, details more that could be helpful in the beginning. There is a configuration uh, where you can choose the simple mode or the expert mode. I would recommend you to use always the simple mode that creates the links between the items and the devices. So it, it uh, gives you, uh, uh, how to say in English, uh, it uh, saves you a lot of work. When you are upwards, when you are an expert, you can put this in expert mode and you can link the items, the items, the channels and the devices, you can link by yourself, but this would be, uh, this is a, a little messy in the beginning, so please use the interlinker always in single mode. 
And the other one is uh, it's good to try to configure as soon as you can. It's good to try to configure as soon as soon as soon as you can the regional settings. Okay, the regional settings. Uh, as you say Spanish, English, uh, German, uh, Greek, uh, Italian, and your country and your the place you you, you are because it's very helpful. This this kind of information is read by the victims, so it's very important to configure in the in the beginning. Okay. So what if if you are doing if you are doing fine and you have uh, performed your installation, you will reach a window something like this one. I will I can use mine. This is this is the, the one in my in my house as you can see. It's a local ID, uh, Raspberry Pi, is the port, and here I have uh, the different options to, to go. So my recommendation is, well, if you finish your configuration, the first is to go to the paper U UI, the paper user interface, is this, is this one, okay? So here you, you have uh, different menus, I will I will show you now. Go back. So please go first one. This is the one I use most. Is the paper user interface. What do you have in the paper user interface? Well, here you have configuration and you have uh, the add-ons. So if I go to mine again, you you will have here configuration and it's in configuration system where you will. Interlinking here in interlinking. Okay, uh, it's here. Let me check. Sorry. Right. Sorry, a little slow. Here in interlinking is where you choose if you want to to, to do it automatically or or not. Interlinking, you see here, you can have the simple mode or, the, or, or not. So my advice is for you to go always to the simple mode, okay? This is very, very important. And, and here you have the regular, the regional settings, okay? So you can put uh, the, your regional settings. This is the first thing I will do. And here I have already some beatings configured and and some other not, but the first thing I would like to show you is how do I add a pin pin. So it's not in configuration, it's in add-ons. In add-ons menu, okay, wait, it's taking some time, let's go here, okay. Well, I will show you. In my, in the add-ons menu, you will have buildings. Here, you can install or uninstall any buildings you would like to to use to, with your with your platform. Okay. Check. Okay. So here you you can have add-ons, buildings, and in the buildings here you can, as you can see. You can install or uninstall any building you want. Okay. For instance, I have this Chromecast install, whatever you want. Okay. This is the Inocean, but you need the you need the USB dongle for Inocean. Uh, you have the for instance Philips Hue building, which I have installed. You have uh, iCloud, well, this is crazy. Uh, you have uh, here, you have the Kinex beating, okay, a Cody, whatever. So, I have MetaMob also installed. Plex, if you are Plex fan, you can use with the one. This is a multimedia, a nice multimedia system. This is the Zoom TV to integrate your, your TV with with uh, this uh, platform, and finally in the set side system. Well, 
whether you hang around. Well, and finally, here you have the sea wave beating. And please don't confuse the sea wave beating with the sea wave beating. This is something different. No? This is to you to be used with a pop controller or with the sea wave uh, sea wave platform. So please use this, this one, sea wave beating. Okay. So, do you want me to install some some any of any of these just for testing purposes? Do you want Do you want me to? Well, I'm back. Hello. Uh, so, are you following me? Someone is lost. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, do you? Did you see any meeting you like a lot that you would, you would like me to install? Yes, but that's Kinex because uh, we are using Kinex at school. Okay, so I will put the Kinex one. Yeah. 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 So, uh, okay. So you just plug here Kinex bit in and it will take a while but it will install it. Okay? So when when it's finished, it is it's the same for all, all the buildings, but it's finished, you can go to configuration. Right? Here I have installed, you can go to configuration, buildings, and now you have the opportunity to configure the building. As you see here it's already installed. If I click, I I can start uh, configuring the 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 bidding, okay, and even I can go to uh, things, and I can say I can say here I want to add a new thing object, let's say, and what kind of object I have to choose. The one from Kinex, okay? And uh, here it says if I want to add a Kinex device or whatever. If it's a Kinex device, I will add it here, okay? And here I have to, uh, well, first of all, I have to create a bridge, but finally here I will put the physical and logical address of the Kinex uh, device, okay? And this is explained later. But this, this, this is uh, the way. So, I will recap a little bit. So, first of all, you have to choose the platform you want to install OpenHub. Second, install it. If it's a Raspberry Pi, load the image, you put the image in an SD card, and you plug the, the SD card in your, your Raspberry Pi, and that's all. When you finish, you will have something like this, and you will have to choose paper user interface. And via the paper user interface, you can go to add-ons, and in the add-ons, you can add as many buildings as you want. And with the configuration, you can configure that building. Sometimes you, can, you have to configure some parameters depending on the building. And the last step is you can go to items and say, I want to add an item related to this building, and uh, you will you will find out. Many times, as you see here, the, this is an inbox. Many times, when you add a new building, uh, the system discovers by himself uh, the the new device. For instance, if you add a Samsung TV or a Philips U or a Metatmo, probably it will discover and it will appear automatically in the inbox. Okay. So, as I told you, there is a lot of amazing. Meetings. I will start with the one uh, we are uh, talking uh, as here, as I told you, there's a lot. When sometimes when you are it will discover automatically. For instance, if you put the video from Google Broadcast, probably if it's in the same network, the the open hub platform will discover your 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 uh, Google Broadcast. Okay, so I 
will I will start with the uh, the C wave uh, beating. Okay, the C wave beating because this is one of the protocol to uh, you have been working with. So after the installation, after you go to paper user interface, you have to go add-ons, beatings, C wave, and install the beatings. Okay, and install the beating. So when you have the, as I said, this got confused with the, the other C wave, C wave PT. Okay? And when you finish, uh, well, you you will have, you, you need some, some, you need some hardware, you need uh, an USB C wave dongle. There are many in the market. This is the more well known one, the one from IOTech. There is another, there is a, uh, there, it's, it can be done also with a little piece of uh, board called uh, Raspberry, Raspberry is a hat, a simple hat you can put on the top of the Raspberry Pi, and well, you just plug in, and the system, when the meeting is installed, will discover your, your USB, probably you will have to go to uh, uh, system configuration, bidding configuration, C way bidding configuration, and you will have to configure the serial controller, uh, the, the controller, the, the USB where you have the, the C way dangle. Okay, so here you will say where is the, which port it is and everything about the, the C way. And with this done, you can start adding uh, objects to the system. You will go to uh, items, add item, add e wave add, uh, item, and it will give you the opportunity to include the, the device, okay? So, you will find out that the serial controller is online when everything is fine, uh, and you will have the opportunity to add uh, new, new devices, okay? And as I told you, there are another uh, interfaces. Instead of, of using a uh, paper user, user interface, you can use this one, which is called HAB Min, with two similar things. But I have to say, I waste a lot of time with this interface, but please use this, uh, this one. So, uh, I will repeat all of this with my installation. So here, I repeat, this is my install. So here you can see my local IP. First thing to do, go to add-ons, and install the c way beating. It's a little bit slow. Here, you go down, 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 and you have to install, okay? Second thing, you go to configuration, Binding, and here you can go to configure the seed weight binding. Click, and here you have everything to configure your, your binding. Okay? Well, every compatible device and so on. You have to plug the USB dongle, the C wave USB dongle, and probably you will find out that it will appear a new object, a new thing called C Wave Serial Controller. So here you are, C Wave Serial Controller. And if everything is fine, it will appear online. I can edit this one. And here you will see which is the serial port with I plug, where I plug the USB device. And uh, here I have more configurations about what, how to use this uh, controller. Okay? So, here I will stop and explain something. And this is just a little bit for, for experts. Okay, so, the, if you have been working with Z-Wave, you say, okay, Chemi, okay, Jose Miguel, this is very nice, but what are you telling is, we have our system with e working very, very well, 
and uh, we want to use these seaway devices now with open heart. Do we have to remove ex every device and break through to open a heart to use them? You understand what I mean? Which is a very hard work to do. Yeah? So, for instance, here in my home, in my home, I have uh, a lot of devices, but I don't want to. Uh, I, in this place, I, I don't want to remove and add uh, every sub, uh, every device. So, what you can do? Well, you can add the Seaway beeping and the Seaway serial controller as a secondary controller. Okay, so you can go, you can go to your Edomus and let's say teach your controller, teach your USB all the devices you have. And when you plug this on the uh, OpenHAB platform, it will discover everything. Okay, did you understand what I'm telling? You follow me? Yeah. So I can, I can. I can show you this example. For instance, if I go to my op open uh, HAB install here, and uh, here I search by Seaway, you will see I have a lot of devices, a lot of a lot of things. Let, let's let's check here, Seaway. You will see I have a lot of modules. Okay. This, do you see the green line? That this is modules. See wave I have online. I use them. We, we cannot see your desktop right now. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. You see my face. Thank you, Daniel. Now you see my desktop. Yeah. Okay. So here, yeah. I go to things. I make a filter for C wave, and do you see, do you see the green line? This is the, this is um, uh, C wave devices I have online in my Open Hub platform. But these are devices I have also in my Edomos platform. I will show you right away. This one, node number 16. You see, node number 16. If I go to my Edomus, and uh, here I, I told my Edomus to show, show me which is the node number 16, it's the same one. Okay. Yeah, you have. It's the same. It's the same now. So I use it both from Edomus and from Open uh, Hub. How do I manage to do that? Well, my Edomus is my primary controller, my primary controller, and I manage to put my Open Hub here. You see, as a secondary controller. So my Edomus teach the USB, everything he has to know about my G-Wave network and nodes. And when I plug to the Open Hub platform, everything appeared here. So I didn't have to remove from it Did you Did you understand what I did? Not how I did it, but what I did it? Or, or you are completely lost? Okay. So, um, wait, uh, um, open, uh, not I have a problem. Uh, you can put uh, uh, in a open uh, open up as a node in a Windows. You can put your uh, open hub USB as a secondary controller. Okay. You need those. Okay, so if I, I program a component in a, in a open up. And uh, this is not uh, in conflict with the uh, rules in Edomus. No, it's not that. No. I can send. I can send the same command. 
I can send the same command. I will show you. For example, ah. I can go to my bus. Okay. For instance, you will see. Okay, change the... I can go to... Yeah, I will change. So, sorry, why? There is no conflict. Uh, I will show you. I can go to my, my um, roller shutter number two. Um, you can see, I can open this, this window here and it's opening. Maybe you heard the noise. But I can go also to my Open HIV platform and I can go to control and go to roller shutter and say and um, request the command now to go down and it will work. Okay? You understand? No. So I can I can go for I will show you in a in a meeting yeah. way. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, this is this is the same the same roller shutter, but I'm managing from OpenHIV, and I can ask to go down. So there is no conflict. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Imagine this is the same. If you have some experience with Idomus. This is the same with Idomus, you can control everything locally via PC or via the smartphone. And there is no conflict. It's just make the last order. Understand? So, the point in a, when, I, when you are teaching or when you are um, uh, in a lab or you are working, usually you will have one controller as a main controller. So you will have Idomus working with some devices. Uh, one month later, you will have uh, Open Hub as a primary controller working with some devices. And there's no, this is something usual. But all of them is that sometimes you have a very nice demo working and you want to show the possibilities of using these devices with Idomus and with OpenHub. So, the point would be include uh, the, the controller as a secondary, okay? Uh, I don't have time here to explain you everything about how to include the, the dongle as a secondary device, okay? Uh, what I can tell you, uh, I, can, I can make a different document to explain that. This is, this is a bit complicated, but I have to say this is a software, this is the software. This is a software for the C-Wave Alliance where you can plug the USB and here you told that the standard mode, this is, I want to be secondary and you go to a domus and you say include device. And this is the way to include the device as a secondary. Right? Which is not easy, but it's very good uh, at the end of the day, okay? So, for me it's important that you understand. Could you repeat, please? May I ask you something? Yes? In such way, can we connect uh, things that is not compatible? I mean, uh, Z-Wave uh, things, and uh, it does works like the connection to some other system, and it works together. It's something like this, I think. Yeah, it's something like this. You can make all this work together. So, the thing I want to explain to you is, one, you will, you will be able to install the C-Wave Indeed as a primary controller or as a secondary controller, okay? Which is not transparent, but it's something you can do. So, you can have an install working and you can have a main controller and a secondary controller, okay? Well, if if uh, if we have time, uh, I can go back to this later. But I have to 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 go. The, the first thing uh, the first thing I will do with OpenHub is just try to make it work with G-Wave as a primary controller. 
primary controller, okay? One device. But when you might start, you can, I, I will send you a document in detail how to do it, but try to do it as a secondary controller. So you can include it in a secondary network and you will get these 50, 60 devices right away in your open uh, hub system, which is very, very nice and very, very good for the, for the students. Okay, well, I will go on a little bit with the presentation. So, this was a little introduction about the C-Way BT. Other BT you have, other BT you have, I don't know if you see my face now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, other BT you have is the BT for uh, KX devices. So, again, you have to go to paper user interface, add-ons, BTs, and you have to install the KX. We saw you for that. Oh, you, sorry for that. We saw your face. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, I have. Do you see my screen now? Good, it's fine. So, I, I repeat. So, you have to go paper user interface, add ons, beatings, KNX, and install the KNX beating. So, what do you need here? Of course, you don't need a Segway dongle. What you need is some kind of device that connects uh, the, the, the KNX uh, bus, the KNX wires, to, to the Open Hub platform. The easy way of doing this is via this kind of uh, IP tunnel or IP router gateway. If you have a USB serial uh, the KNX uh, gateway, it can be also done. You can plug the USB directly to the Raspberry Pi, and probably it will work, <coughs> okay? But, well, uh, the, the, for uh, my opinion, this is the better way to do that. So, the point would be, you add the binding, and you have to configure the binding. How do you configure the binding? You have to add in the configuration parameters, you have to add the IP address of the of the device, and you have to add the uh, physical address of the KNX bus uh, of the device. Okay, so here you have the, the, the you have to the, the parameters you have to fill in, and when you fill in, you 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 have uh, everything, and after that you can start adding uh, KNX uh, devices as channels with the logical address, with the group address. So uh, it would be something like that. Even more, if you add the physical address of the device, as far as the gateway, this device is hearing everything in the bus, this, the, the other hub can add automatically the logical address. This can be, uh, I don't know how many of you know about KNX, but uh, those who know, uh, they understand the difference because the physical address and the logical address, uh, they understand what I am talking about. So it would be very, very, very easy to, to add devices to, to, the, to the system. And this is the final result. You will have something, this is a roller shutter and a timing light. Uh, I am managing with the KNX integrated in the, in the system. And uh, here and next, you can have a C wave lighting in the same way, no problem at all. Okay? So that was fast, but uh, this is the way of adding KNX. Uh, if you are. Oh, sorry, I think I have to use my. How many of you knows about KNX? Hands up. Hands up. Only one. So, do you know the difference between the logical address and physical address? The point is in the bar. Yes. So, you understand it's very easy to, to add the physical address and to discover the logical address the system will do it. So, I sent you yesterday uh, this PowerPoint, this presentation. I I'm doing today, 
But I sent you also a very big project done with uh, other hub and Kinex. So maybe you can have a look and you can realize the kind of enormous projects you can do using this platform. Okay? More questions about Kinex? Well, I will go on. Another example, well, you can uh, you can go and add a weather BT. As far as your platform can be connected to the internet, you can get uh, weather information. So again, you have to go to uh, paper user interface, add-ons, beatings. You have to find out weather beating and you have to plug install. When you have it installed, it will provide you with a lot of uh, uh, information about the weather. It will tell you you have a local weather uh, item and it will give you a lot of information about the weather. To configure it, this meeting, you have to go to the, to the weather underground web page and you have to get your uh, ADP, ADK. This is the way your system is connected to weather underground platform. You, you, you have to create an account and get your uh, APIK, okay? Uh, just two, some months ago, uh, it was for free, uh, and I'm sorry, but I guess that now you have to pay. So, after you install the meeting, you go to meeting weather underground web page, you create your account, and you get your uh, APIK, and you go to 